The vast majority of major religions do not have a single leader or chief spiritual figure. In Catholicism, however, such a figure exists and is called the Pope. This high office has a rich and long history. Today we will talk about it and present 10 interesting facts about popes. The Pope is the head of the Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican. This position has its origins in one of the apostles of Jesus Christ, St. Peter. He is considered to be the first pope. There have been approximately 266 popes throughout history. There have been complex events surrounding this office in the past. There have been popes who held office for only a few days, and there have been popes who were elected illegitimately and recognized as anti-popes, fake and fake pontiffs. There were even two popes who existed at the same time, each considering himself a true pope and the other a fake pope. Throughout history, most popes have been Italian, which is not surprising since they were chosen from the local Italian clergy. 217 popes in history have been from Italy, 16 from France, 7 from Germany, and there have been several popes from other countries. In today's world, the Pope rules the Catholic Church and is an important public figure, but has no political or military power. However, earlier in the Middle Ages and before that time, popes had great power and could organize wars, raise armies, and excommunicate the rulers of entire countries. At that time, the Pope owned a large territory in Italy known as the Papal Region. It had its own army and taxes. The papacy was fiercely fought over, including bribery, blackmail, seduction, and even murder. Today's popes lead a pious life, at least publicly. The popes of the past, however, were not so pious. Many of them had huge palaces and many lovers of all genders and ages. They participated in political assassinations, plots, and poisonings of their opponents. Nevertheless, it is worth noting that 82 popes were recognized as saints. Perhaps they were really good men, but it is difficult to say for sure. How does one become Pope? In theory, any male Catholic, even a layman, can become Pope. But this has never happened. To really have a chance to become Pope, one must first become a Cardinal in the Catholic Church. A Cardinal is the highest position in the hierarchy of the Catholic Church, above which only the Pope himself is placed. In order to become a Cardinal, one must move long and hard up the career ladder in the Catholic Church, first becoming a deacon, then a priest, and after that, a bishop. Moreover, one must take a vow of celibacy and abstain from sex. It is also necessary to receive a theological education, which will take many years. Not any bishop can become a cardinal, but only those who are chosen by the Pope himself and ordered to elevate that person to the rank of cardinal. Cardinals assist the Pope in running the church and can wear red robes, looking very cool. They also participate in a conclave, which is an election for the Pope, these elections take place after the death or abdication of the Pope, which is extremely rare. For the election, the Cardinals travel to the Vatican where they are locked in the palace. The Cardinals gather in a large hall several times a day to vote for the Pope. Each Cardinal writes one piece of paper and hands it in. The papers are then counted and called out in front of the Cardinals. It takes two three of the Cardinals plus one vote to elect a Pope. During the election, the Cardinals are unable to communicate with the outside world. They cannot leave the palace, their phones are taken away, and they cannot communicate with anyone outside until the Pope is chosen. The public outside at the Vatican looks up at the roof where there is a tube. If another round of voting has passed and the Pope is not chosen, there is black smoke from the burning of the notes coming out of the pipe. If the Pope is elected, the smoke turns white. The papers that the Cardinals write are added with a special substance that colors the smoke white. White smoke means that the Pope has been elected. The new pontiff then has to take a new name, after which he presents himself to the faithful from the balcony. There have been occasions in history when elections lasted more than two years. After that point, Cardinals began to be locked up so that they would not drag out the process. In the last two centuries, the Popes have become mostly really worthy people. In the Middle Ages, however, the situation was quite different. The papal throne was often occupied by very strange characters who clearly should not have been there in such a high position. As you already know, popes were forbidden to marry or have sexual relations with anyone. But many popes absolutely did not follow this important rule. For example, Pope Julius III, who lived in the 16th century, picked up a pauper boy about 15 or 16 years old in the street, whom he then took into his family. He then quickly made him a cardinal, 
gave him several castles and showered him with gold. The reason for this was that the young man was his lover, and everyone knew it. Another pope, John XIV, who lived in the 10th century, became pope at a very young age, about 18 or 20. His election was secured by his influential father, who was a prince of Rome. While on the papal throne, he engaged in entertainments that are of interest to any young man. He turned the papal palace into a veritable brothel, where there were constantly many prostitutes with whom he amused himself. He also often had a feast of alcohol and women and gambled. In addition, he held ordinations of priests in the stable rather than in the temple, and called upon the ancient Roman pagan gods to help him when he gambled. John XIV had many enemies, and in order to maintain his position, he turned to the German king Otto I. Otto the came to Rome, slew all the enemies of the Pope, and strengthened his power. In gratitude, the Pope made Otto the emperor. However, Otto I later dethroned the Pope because he was dissatisfied with his dissolute lifestyle. There was another Pope in history, Benedict IX, who lived in the 11th century. He also took the throne at a young age, about 20, and engaged in obscene activities. Eventually, he sold the papacy to his wealthy relative. The wealthy relative became Pope for a while, but then he was deposed. Benedict the Saint eventually returned to the papacy, but his reign did not last. He was also the only pope in history who sold his pontificate to another man for money. As you have already realized, history knows many flawed popes. Among them was one who is particularly firmly entrenched in history as the worst pope. His name was Alexander VI, and his surname was Borgia. Even if you are not interested in history, you may still have heard this last name. The Borgias were a very influential Italian family that had been around for centuries. Pope Alexander VI became Pope in the first place because he bribed cardinals during conclave to vote for him. While on the throne, he did many cruel things. He had many illegitimate children by his mistresses and lavished these children with gold and jewels at the expense of the church treasury. He made his children cardinals and gave them church property. He had a network of spies who sought dirt on his enemies. This compromise was then used for blackmail. Alexander VI almost openly traded ecclesiastical positions, and one could buy the status of a bishop or even a cardinal from him. He was also famous for his lecherous behavior in the palace, where there were always many promiscuous women. It is also rumored that there were entire competitions held in his palace, where dozens of prostitutes were invited, and his guests had to compete with each other to see who would last the longest. Borgia died after one of the feasts, and his death gave rise to many versions of what he died of. He may have died because he mistakenly drank his own poisoned wine. It is also possible that he was poisoned by his own son, Cesare, who wanted to get rid of his father and take his place. We shall never know the truth. The surname Borgia in the Middle Ages in Italy became a nickname for sinfulness, venality, and evil. Only men can occupy the papal throne, but there is a famous legend that for about two and a half years in the ninth century, the papal throne was occupied by a woman who pretended to be a man for many years. According to the legend, she began pretending to be a man at an early age, showed outstanding academic success, and eventually moved up the ranks of the Catholic Church. She became a cardinal and then was elected pope. Taking the name 1-8 while riding a horse around Rome with her retinue, she, according to one version of the legend, gave birth to a child and died there, right after giving birth. Another version claims that shocked locals immediately stoned her, and she died from it. This legend has existed for many centuries, and in the Middle Ages, churchmen did not doubt its reality. However, modern scholars agree that this is just a legend, and this actually did not happen, because no serious written sources in the 9th century, when she allegedly lived, do not confirm the facts of her existence, although this historical period has been well documented. However, Although this is most likely a legend, until about the 15th century there was a special custom. After the new pope was chosen, he had to sit naked backwards on a special big chair with a hole, after which a special person would stick his hand in and make sure that the chosen pope was a man, and then he would announce it. After the 15th century, this procedure was abolished. Look at this picture. Do you know what it shows? It shows the trial of a corpse of a pope sitting on a throne. And it's not a legend, it's a historical fact. It took place in the 9th century, when there was a pope named Formosus. He did a lot for the church and had many admirers, but also many enemies. Formosus died, but his story was not over. His corpse had many posthumous adventures. 
The next pope after Formosus was quickly deposed, and a very young fellow, Pope Stephen VI, took his place. He commanded that Formosus's body be dug out of the grave. Only eight months had passed since his death. They took out this half-decomposed corpse, seated him in a chair, and brought him to the courtroom. During the trial of the corpse, Pope Stephen questioned the corpse. Pope Formosus was in charge of the corpse by a deacon behind the chair, who tried to imitate Formosus's voice and agreed with all the charges that Pope Stephen brought against him. Formosus was accused of many sins, violent seizure of power, violation of church rules, and more. Eventually, he was found guilty. As punishment, the corpse's fingers, with which he had once signed invalid documents and made the sign of the cross, were severed. Formosus's body was then tied to horses and dragged through the streets of Rome. The body was then buried in an unmarked mass grave. But that was not all. Sometime later, bounty hunters dug up Formosus's body, but they did not find any jewelry on it. They tied a weight to the body and dumped it in the river. The body reappeared after some time, and the locals brought it to the local chapel, where a miracle was rumored to have begun to take place. At the same time, the Roman commoners began to spread rumors that the god was angry because of the mocking of Formosus's corpse. After all, there was a small earthquake during his trial. Eventually, the frightened people revolted, seized Pope Stephen, who had tried Formosusa, imprisoned him, and killed him there. Formosus's body was dressed in papal robes and buried with honor. All charges against Formosusa were dropped, and the cadaveric trial was declared null and void. But the story does not end there either. Over the next ten years, seven popes changed. There was such a chagrin. One of them, Pope Sergius III, again subjected Formosusa to condemnation and censure. It is not known for sure if this is true, but some sources report that Formosus's body was dug up again and he was tried again. Such may be the posthumous adventures of the Pope's body. The work of popes in the old days was very dangerous. They were constantly being poisoned, strangled, or killed. In the modern world, the life of popes has become much safer. However, in 1981, Pope John Paul II was assassinated. The Pope was riding in his car around the Vatican, greeting the crowd around him, and all was well. But suddenly, shots rang out. Several bullets hit the Pope and wounded him in the arms and stomach. The perpetrator was immediately disarmed, thrown to the ground, and arrested. He was a young Turkish citizen named Mehmet Ali Agka, who had escaped from a Turkish prison and made his way to Italy with forged documents. He was sentenced to life imprisonment in Italy. He then confessed that Bulgarian secret services were involved in the murder, but there was no evidence. He was convicted only of his own crimes. Pope John Paul II made a full recovery, and a few years later came to the prison, where he met with Mehmet in private. The contents of this conversation remained secret, but the Pope indicated that he forgave his failed murderer. The Pope appealed to the public and the Italian government to release Aga from prison, and this happened but not until 2001. Agcha then spent 20 years in an Italian firm and was then released. After that, however, he was sent to Turkey, where he was imprisoned again for crimes committed on Turkish territory. While in prison in Turkey, he converted to Catholicism and became very religious. He was finally released from prison in 2010 and began actively using his fame to make money. He constantly gave interviews to journalists and each time gave new details about who had ordered the murder of the Pope. First, he claimed it was the Bulgarian Secret Service, then the Soviet KGB, and then some Vatican cardinals who had ordered the murder in order to get rid of the Pope. Agsha also declared himself to be Jesus Christ and proclaimed that the end of the world was coming soon. In 2014, he declared his desire to become a Catholic priest. It used to be that, according to the old tradition, the Pope was carried around the city on a special large chair carried by his servants on their shoulders. In the middle of the 20th century, however, one of the popes abolished this tradition because it was inappropriate for modern people to carry someone in this way. Therefore, the portable chair was replaced by a machine called the Pope Mobile. This is the car the pope drives when he arrives somewhere during his visit and greets the assembled crowd. Before the assassination attempt on John Paul II, which we just talked about, the Pope Mobiles were not armored. After that, however, they became very armored. The current Pope Francis likes to show that he is modest and close to the people, so he often refuses to use the Pope Mobile or uses an open car with no armored glass. Nevertheless, 
In all his travels and during his life, the Pope is always accompanied by numerous guards of the Vatican Special Services. His security is organized at the highest level, similar to the security of the presidents of the USA and Russia. In addition, the Pope has the Swiss Guard in his service. It appeared in the 16th century when Swiss soldiers were considered the best mercenaries. The guard still exists and guards the Vatican, is present during various ceremonies and wears brightly colored medieval clothes, similar to those of a clown, as well as helmets and edged weapons. They always have modern firearms as well, such as pistols. All soldiers receive good military training in Switzerland, and all must be Catholic and unmarried. The salary in the Swiss Guard is quite small, only one and a half thousand euros a month, which is a small sum for the Swiss. Nevertheless, there are always enough people who want to serve in the Swiss Guard. Popes are elected to their office for life and hold it until death, which usually happens in most cases unless there has been a violent overthrow. However, such cases have not happened for a long time now, since the Middle Ages are a thing of the past. Pope Benedict, who held the position from 2005 until 2013, voluntarily abdicated and resigned. This was the first time a pope had abdicated in almost 700 years, and the Catholic Church did not even have protocols on what to do in such a situation. As a result, the new title, Pope at Rest, was introduced, which was given to Benedict XVI. Since then, he has been living in his small residence in Italy, receiving a monthly pension from the Vatican and not leading any public life, nor running the church. The official reason for the abdication has been health problems. Benedict said that because of them he could not properly deal with church affairs. However, there is much speculation on the subject. Some journalists and connoisseurs of church affairs believe that the real reason for the resignation may have been the large number of problems related to pedophilia and scandals involving Catholic priests in many countries. Benedict may have been under pressure from the cardinals because of his inability to deal effectively with the problem. The current pope's name is Francis, and his secular name is Jorge Mario Bergoglio. He took his throne in 2013 after his predecessor, Benedict XVI, abdicated. Francis became the first pope from the Americas to hail from Argentina. Since the beginning of his pontificate, he has shown the utmost modesty. Before that, he had lived very modestly in Argentina, although his position in the church allowed him to live richly in the palace. When he became pope, his enthronement ceremony, that is, his accession, was as modest as possible. All popes are given what is known as a fisherman's ring on assuming office. It depicts the Apostle Peter, the first pope, and an apostle of Christ. The Apostle Peter was a fisherman by profession. So each pope is created such a ring, and after his death it is destroyed. The ring is usually made of pure gold and is very large, but Francis asked to have a silver ring made with gilding for him in order to save money. He also refused to wear the expensive papal outfits, and especially the red papal shoes, which had been the symbol of the papacy for many centuries. Instead, he wears regular $1.50 shoes. He has asked that his papal throne be replaced by a simple chair in the palace. He also often abandons the armored papal car in favor of a simple open car. He is doing much to do something to clean up the reputation of the Catholic Church, which has been linked to pedophile scandals, allegations of financial fraud and corruption. He dissolved the Vatican Bank's leadership and replaced it, and forced the bank to publish annual reports for greater transparency. He also declassified many documents from the Vatican archives to protect the Vatican from accusations that they collaborated with the Nazis during World War II. Pope Francis does seem progressive compared to his predecessors. However, he still holds many medieval views in order not to lose part of his flock. Write your comments. I always read them all, and they are also very helpful in promoting videos. I also suggest you watch my videos. The links will be right on the screen. Subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on the bell. Bye.